showing up on the first page of Google search is kind of like the holy grail of blogging. By researching your readers' needs and answering the searcher's intent, you up your chances of reaching that revered spot on the first page by people who actually want to read your content. Hi, I'm Liz Stapleton, host of the Blogger Breakthrough Summit, and this is the podcast where I share tidbits and tips from our incredible summit speakers. Today's episode, you're going to hear tips um, to up your keyword game from content creator and SEO specialist Nikki Robinson that she shared with us during the 2020 Blogger Breakthrough Summit. And I'm excited to say she's actually coming back for the 2022 Blogger Breakthrough Summit. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to it. I mean, I think the big thing that I want to um, talk about first is just um, answer, answering searcher intent. Okay. So I think people think about keywords in the sense that um, they think, oh, I need to do this keyword research. I need to find this perfect keyword. And then it's going to have this magical set of numbers assigned to it. Like a lot of people are searching for it and I know I can rank for it. And so I'm going to like cram it in to, to my content in a way that like maybe isn't working. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't want keywords that like, you know, people are searching for a lot. Um, and you know, your market is searching for a lot, like know your readers. Right. Mm -hmm. But I guess what I'm saying is, um, like when it comes to searcher intent, you need to sit down and think about, okay, how are my readers searching for this and how can I answer their question with a post? So I like to think about keywords. When you think about like a focus keyword, I like to think about that as the topic of your post. Okay. So like, what am I writing about? That's your keyword. Like people think it's kind of this, like, you know, um, magical thing that they're gonna you know they're gonna come up with this perfect thing and just like stick it in a bunch of places and that's just gonna magically like make them rank but it's more than that it's really about um you know figuring out um you know again what your what what your readers want and then answering their questions right so like a lot of the time i go when you get emails from people you know and i say this to businesses too it's like when you're out in the field doing customer service but same goes for bloggers right when you get emails from people when you have people responding to your mailing list when you have people commenting on stuff what are they asking about what do they want to know from you and that's the stuff that you want to write about and that's going to lend itself naturally to what keywords are going to be important to your blog so i kind of just want to say a little bit about that because i just feel like there's a lot of shoehorning that goes on. It's just yeah, like, like, I need like to get the keyword in this many times. Um, and some of that's, you know, like Yoast says you need it in there more or something because you're using a plugin. But you can use related keywords and that can almost be better. It's like, L it's called LSI, which I forget what it stands for. But uh, right? Am I, am I totally off base here? Am I using the right terminology? <laughs> no, that's fine. I mean, LSI is fine. I don't like using LSI just because it, or just the term, just because it's okay. kind of confusing, but yeah. I mean, but it's, but, it's basically wor like words and phrases that relate to the topic you're talking on. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, related keywords that support the keyword that you're, um, that you're writing about. So if it's, you know, how to make macaroni and cheese, you know, you're obviously going to have like various things that that naturally fit into that, right? So it's going to be like the type of macro, you know, the type of noodle and the type of cheese and like the, the different things. And it's not, so it's not something that's like way out here that's different that you have to like find, also find. Yeah. It's those natural words that also, you know, flow right into what you're, you know, what you're already talking about. And I think what I tell people the most is like, get rid of the garbage words I say. So like, so the garbage words are when you're saying like it or that or whatever, use nouns, adjectives, and verbs, like really specific stuff. And that's what's filling in your content more and making it much more robust, right? So you're not just saying, then you stir it. Well, what are you stirring, right? Like, yeah. so, you know, and that's, that's a really great way to just naturally add a lot of those, um, we call them semantic keywords most of the time. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, those related keywords, um, you know, in a natural, um, in a natural way without, trying to make some magic happen that you know is impractical <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah because yeah so it's, it's understanding sort of how to use the keywords throughout your content to make it you know the most bang for your buck if you will without being obnoxious <laughs> yeah and you know um I kind of want to say a little bit too about um like a lot of bloggers are in WordPress and I really like WordPress SEO we do specialize in WordPress SEO but that doesn't mean that you can't do SEO on other platforms I just um it's it's a lot more difficult to do SEO on other platforms. I just want to throw that out there. So if you are using WordPress, um, I do recommend using an SEO plugin. Plug in. Um, Yoast is usually pretty much the most common, you know, um, and I, I like Yoast. Um, I think what I want to say about that, though, is that, you know, 
a lot of people think like, oh, I just, you know, put in a word in that focus keyword field and then like I get that green light and then I, I go on my day and my post is optimized. Um, but what I encourage people to do is, um, you know, the, the little, um, you know, indicators that Yoast has, right, it'll have like the green, you know, like what you did right, what you kind of did okay, and then like what you didn't do right. And, you know, those are an okay set of guidelines. Um, they're not terrible. Like, I don't think they're all perfect or great. But, but the thing is, is that they're, it's not a bad set of guidelines in terms of like where to put things and how to optimize your posts. So um, what I encourage people to do is try to get that green light on as many of those items as possible if it naturally makes sense. If it's something where you just feel like you're like, okay, I'm really going overboard on this, then, yeah. you know, in that case, it's like, okay, then dial it back. And there's also some things about Yoast where, um, you know, like I think, and I'm not, I know they updated it recently, but it's like you only have to have something like 300 or 500 words in the post for them to say yeah. like, yeah, your post is long enough. And, you know, most top content that ranks right now is like, 1800 2200 words um you know if you have that many words to say about something then i say you know cover the topic as extensively as possible you know yeah. go into detail about that one specific topic mm -hmm. you know get specific talk about one thing um you know elaborate on it but don't just add words to add words right so like we don't want to just like oh this doesn't have enough words so i'm just going to like cram more words in there so that there's more yeah. words yeah Okay, hopefully this episode has helped you to discover how answering a person's search intent will help you reach more people, rank higher, and create targeted content faster. Join us next time when you will be learning how you can use Google Analytics to better monetize your affiliate marketing. I'll catch you then.